This is a really quick review of the ZWO 30mm f4 versus the Siboney, which is also a 30mm lens and is also an f4. Both of these have their place in the market. There are pros and cons to each. The Siboney, it's becoming very popular. I'm seeing this thing pop up everywhere. It costs about half what the ZWO does. I think the ZWO is 100 bucks. The Siboney, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, S-V-B-O-N-Y. It is, it's running sometimes 50, and some places you can get it around 38, 40 bucks, okay? But there are a few differences between the two. They're both 30 millimeter objectives. They're both F4. They're both 120 millimeter focal length. Now, I bought one, I bought the Siboney because the ad said that it was lighter than the ZWO. Turns out that's not the case. I don't know, maybe when they were converting it from metric to English, somebody messed up. But uh, the Siboney is definitely heavier. And actually, all right, so I am going to remove the camera because obviously that would be an unfair comparison between the two. Now the foot of the ZWO actually comes off and what holds it on is actually a quarter 20 screw. So if we are mounting this guy, has a quarter 20 screw, you can actually remove the foot, which will even decrease the weight even further, which that is actually something that I do because I use this with my Skywatcher Adventure Pro, which isn't really designed for a heavy weight. So, you know, I take everything off of it that I can. But let's weigh this. And as you can see, it comes in at about nine ounces. Now, the Siboney, okay, comes in at a little bit of a different weight. And there isn't really anything on here that can be removed per se to decrease the weight uh, this is about it i'm keeping the lens cap on it with both of these but as you can see it's coming in at 12 ounces so it's a little bit heavier right that's the difference between the weight and the reason for this difference in weight isn't necessarily because one is bigger than the other i know right now they appear to be bigger than the other um, but really this guy does they both collapse down to a pretty compact state I just have it threaded out this far because that's where it reaches focus when I have this particular guy Set in here this far and I like to I like to have my guide camera kind of a little bit further into the body that way It doesn't flex at all. I know I've seen some guys man they, They've really got them hanging way out and I would recommend that you thread it further out and both of these cameras By the way the threads that are on the tubes in them. They do come out quite a ways this this one comes out a good inch and a half uh, The ZWO I think comes out about an inch What makes the Zivboni hopefully I'm pronouncing this right heavier than the ZWO well uh, Really it just comes down to the tubing that this thing is actually made out of a lot of the tubes and parts in it are much much thicker than the ZWO and, and when you hold the two there is a noticeable difference between the weight of the two but you know really the weight is the only thing that I would have a complaint about however if you know a few extra ounces is not a big deal to you and you'd rather you know pay half as much absolutely the ZW the Siboney I'm sorry it is kind of a great deal now the only other detractor of the Siboney is the fact that there really isn't much of a lens hood built into it and for optical reasons this is not really a big deal but you know if you want to go lightweight you know the ZWO it has a little bit more of a inset there on the main front lens element and as you can see I need to clean both of these but you know that that just kind of gives you a little bit of extra protection from the dew at night and that's kind of something that I like about the ZWO you know, maybe that's something that Sivoni might actually fix someday. We shall see. But other than that, I mean, really, for the price of the Sivoni, you know, it's worth it. And really, only get the ZWO if the weight is an issue, okay? And that's, that's one of the reasons why I own the ZWO version. It's because I need it on a very lightweight rig. Now, I've used both for quite a while now. And optically, I really can't see any difference between the two of them. And, you know, by the way, a guide scope, you really don't even want it sharp. I see companies selling ED guide scopes, and I have to say to myself, why? Um, you, I actually set these slightly out of focus because the centroid detection of guidance systems is actually more accurate when a star is slightly out of focus versus when the central portion of it is completely saturated. So, 
that's just kind of a little fun tip for you. Now, if you do take this guy off, keep in mind the, the ZWO, the foot, there are some small pins here that can be lost. That's why there's tape on here, just to make sure I don't lose them. And then the last thing I want to note is that both the ZWO and the Zivboni, okay, have a quarter 20 inch thread at the bottom, you know, both at the bottom of the foot. This guy here does not have it on the bottom of the foot. You would have to remove the foot in order to get to it right here. Or you could thread in through the top this way. And that's kind of the only way you could mount it up that way with a quarter 20 inch screw, unless you remove the foot, of course. But, you know, that's that might be kind of an advantage to you, you know, if you want the quarter 20 screw without having to remove the foot, maybe that would swing you to, towards the Ziv Bunny. Now, the only negative to a planetary camera is that, well, they weigh a little bit more than the guide cameras do. However, the planetary cameras do have an advantage that they have a 42 millimeter female thread on them, which threads onto both the ZWO and also the Savoni. Both of them have threads in the back. Now the ZWO, the threads are pretty shallow. The Savoni, they're actually pretty darn deep. Um, you get a nice positive connection with that. There's one last thing about threading your camera onto these guide scopes versus basically inserting them. So when you insert them, you have the ability to basically rotate them. And the key to rotating them is that you typically want the USB-C or, or the lettering here to basically line up with your deck and your RA, okay, at right angles. What that will do is that will make calibration go faster for you. The ZWO doesn't really give you any way to time the camera and rotate it with your deck and RA axis. Whereas the Ziboni can actually rotate completely within the rings. So that's an advantage that the Ziboni has, and that's something else that you may want to take into consideration. Hope you find this review helpful. And you know, I use these cameras both to great effect. They completely satisfy my needs, and I really don't feel any disadvantage, you know, because I'm using both of them in ways that, you know, fully take advantage of, well, their pros and cons. The Ziboni, I use it on a much bigger rig where a couple ounces doesn't really matter that much. And then of course the ZWO, I use it on a real lightweight traveling rig because I need to shed every ounce that I can for that.